Hey guys, this is going to be your uh, homework problems that I told you guys I was going to post up for you. So sorry if I'm still getting this a little bit organized. Um, and I do apologize for the glare right here. There's really nothing I can do about it. I've been trying to fix it for a while. So we went over this one in class and reviewed again real quick, just so that way you have a re uh, recording of it. A drama club must sell at least $1,500 worth of tickets to cover the expenses of producing a play, writing any quality that represents how many adult X and student Y tickets the club must sell. So we already know our X and our Y. Number of adult tickets and our Y is number of student tickets. Now, this next part is what you're going to be expected to be able to do on your own and understand on your own. We're comparing two things here. We are comparing the $1,500 that we want to make versus the $10 per adult ticket combined with the $6 per student ticket. In other words, the $1,500 we want combined uh, or against the actual cash brought in. Okay. So it told us up top, 1500 is what we have to make just to cover expenses. That means you have to understand that this is the least amount we want to make. So 1500 is less than or equal to the actual amount of money we want to bring in. Now here's where the algebra comes in. How do I represent the actual amount of money that comes in? It's $10 per adult ticket. So all the money from the adult tickets is $10 times the number of adult tickets. We don't know how many we're going to sell, but we called it X. So 1,500 is less than or equal 10 times X. Now we have to take into account the amount of money that comes in from student tickets. That would be $6 per ticket or 6Y. So $1,500 is the least amount of money I want to make from selling $10 adult tickets and $6 student tickets, okay? This is the equation that goes in right here. As you type that in, I'm going to get on the screen for a second. I'm going to show you. As you type that in, there's a little bar right here on your calculator. Click this. It starts on basic. Click it down to the symbol here. Now you can type in everything. Okay, see I'm starting to type it all in. I apologize, I just lost it. I want it to go away. I apologize, I don't know why that went away. Is you can also just type in less than and then hit equal to. You see a little less than symbol, and then if you hit equal to, it will combine it for you. Then you can just put in the 10x plus 6y. And then you're all set. Now, you just have to go through and check each of these points. And the nice thing is, please read through this, because this really should hit home and make sense about what's happening. 150 comma 0, it's the combination of tickets sold. 150 adult and zero student. You could probably do this one in your head. If I sell 150 adult at $10 a piece, I made $1,500. And zero student, so I don't have any money coming from the, st the student, that would be a total of $1,500, okay? So we know this one is gonna work. Or we can check it graphically. You go to Desmos and graph that. You also plug in the point you want to check underneath it. And you have to type it in in point form, which means in parentheses with the comma. And then you just look to your graph. Since it's a solid line, on the line is good. So that means we're good. We have a point that is part of our solution set, either on the solid line or in the shaded region. And you can continue doing that for all the rest of the points for number two. Now I'm going to go over number three. Some of these are easy. 
you could graph it and see if this point falls in your solution set, like we just did for the previous problem. Or you can simply plug in. Here's your X. Here's your Y. So plug in. 2 plus 3 has to be less than 7. 5 has to be less than 7. This point produced a true statement. So this is a solution. Okay? Two, three, on to number five. Same thing. Number five, I will show you how to do by Desmos. You could just plug it in, same as we did, or you can go to Desmos, clear everything. It was 8x plus y is greater than negative 6. Let me just double check that. And I'm checking the point negative 1, 2. So now I just come down here. Negative 1, comma, 2. And I look for my point. Now when I zoom in, or you can look really closely, you got to zoom in. Is this point in my solution set? No. It is not in the shaded region. Even if it fell on the line, it wouldn't count this time. Okay? So now you can come up here and double check everything. 8 times negative 1 plus 2 should be greater than negative 3. Negative 8 plus 2 should be greater than negative 3. Negative 6 should be greater than negative 3. Remember, the more negative you are, the smaller you are. Or you can think of just a number line vertically. This is down 6 feet. That's down 3 feet. This is not greater than that. Negative 6 is actually less than negative 3. So no, it is not a solution. So now you can go back. It is not a solution. The next one we're going to go over is number 7. Again, I think we understand how to graph it and see if it's a solution. So I'm going to stick to the algebraic way to do it. I would simply take 3 times negative 1 minus 5 times negative 1 has to be greater than or equal to 2. This is a mistake I see a lot of kids make. Remember, we have two terms. You've got the first term and then the second term. Terms are things to be added or subtracted. I have a positive 3 times negative 1 and I have a negative 5 minus negative 1 or times negative 1. Excuse me. This becomes negative 3. This whole thing, you only get to use the negative ones. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 greater than or equal to 2. 2 is greater than or equal to 2. So this is a solution because 2 is equal to 2. The next one we will go over is number 10. Now, this is real easy to do on the graph. But you notice they didn't give us an equation. You have to understand just how to use the graph. So tell whether 0, negative 1 is a solution. It has to fall in our solution set. 0 is my x. That's my left, right. My y is my up, down. So I look at 0, negative 1. There's the point. That point does not fall in my solution set or my shaded region. So this is not a solution. Okay? I hope this is coming across pretty easy so far. A lot of it's just relying on your calculator. But I would like for you to be able to do the algebra as well. On to number 12. So now you have to check which graph matches up. Let me try to make sure I have all of them in view. When you're checking which graph is correct, you have to make sure the line is in the correct spot. You have to make sure it is shaded on the right side, and you have to check whether or not it is dashed. I gave you guys the chart for it. So when you're looking at these symbols, okay, less than, greater than, 
greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. This means not included, so you have a dashed line. The equal symbols mean included, so you have a solid line. Now, some people were getting confused on this next part. This only works when it's solved for y. If it is y is greater than or greater than or equal to, you shade above. Because y is bigger than, so you shade above. If it's y is less than or less than or equal to, then you shade below. Okay? But you have to be solved for y. So now let's look at our line. We're set. This is solved for y. Y is less than or equal to 5. We know this already. It's a single variable, our hoi box. Hoi, Y gives us a horizontal line. And all of these lines are at 5. We're good at that. Less than or equal to. It's equal to, so we know we have a solid line. Can't be our answer. Can't be our answer. Now, Y is less than, so we have to be shaded below. We have our line at 5, it is solid, and it is shaded below. That one is the correct response. This is false because it has the wrong shaded half point. And then remember, if you feel like going too fast, just go back and rewatch this, or click on the uh, videos in the book. Number 12, now number 14 we are looking at. This one is solved for y as well. This is right there we go. This one is solved for y already, so we're set. We have to check each line though. So remember how to graph a line. You start here. This starts at negative 4, down 2, and you have to remember you assume it's over 1. Down 2, over 1, that line checks. Starts at negative 4, down 2, over 1, that line checks. Starts at negative 4, down 2, over 1, that line checks. Starts at negative 4, down 2, over 1. I apologize, I am still in the building. Jim, make sure to bring your lunch and your Chromebooks, please. Again, five minutes with Jim for interact numbers. Have a great day. Okay, so now, all the lines are accurate. Now we just have to see if it's the shading or the solid or dash line. This is only greater than, so we know it should be dashed. So one of these two is our answers. And we have Y is greater than. So it is dashed and above. Here is our solution. Okay. Y is greater than that. We had the right line. Greater than, above. It's not equal to, so dashed. Number 16. This one is just a touch harder. You can easily do this by going to Desmos. Easily do this by going to Desmos. But if you want to be able to do this by hand, which I know a lot of our, my students do, and I want you to, solve for y. To get y by itself, I have to add 4x. So that means my line is now y is less than, remember, put the 4x up front, minus 7. Okay? Now we're just going to check our lines and make sure we're shaded the correct way. This means we start at negative 7 on the y axis, right there, and then we have to go up 4 over 1. Start at negative 7, up 4, over 1, check. Start at negative 7, up 4, over 1, check. Start at negative 7, up 4, over 1, negative 7, up 4, over 1. So all the lines are graphed correctly. They're going to help you out in the homework right now. They're not trying to trick you on that. But on air tests and things like that, they will make a line just a little bit off to see if you can actually catch what's wrong. So, now we're just looking at the symbol. It's a less than symbol. So we should have a dashed line, and it should be shaded below, because y is less than. 
So we need a dashed line shaded below. Here's our correct answer. All right. Number 18. Now this is the only one that's going to give a little bit of fits. So I'm going to need a little bit more room to work on this. You can see me over here. So I'm going to go through 5x minus 2y less than or equal to 6. Obviously, you could Desmos graph it. But as I go through and solve, let me turn this a little bit just so I know I got you guys on. Get rid of the 5x. Minus 5x, minus 5x. Drop the negative 2y, less than or equal, negative 5x, plus 6. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is the step we have to remember. Going back, most of you guys know to finish this off, divide everything by negative 2. But what was our rule when we were dealing with inequalities? Whenever I divide both sides by a negative, I have to flip the inequality sign. So now I'm at y is greater than or equal. Those cancel. So I'm at 5 over 2x minus 3. 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. This is the line I want to look at to see. Because this is the only way I know my rules for whether I should shade. And it's the only way I really know how to make sure how to graph it. So I start at negative 3. That works. Up 5 over 2. Start at negative 3. Up 5 over 2. Start at negative 3. Up 5 over 2. Start at negative 3. Up 5 over 2. All the lines are accurate. And I apologize. Let me turn back this way so that way I can get I can't get that glare off of that one, but you can see it pretty good, and you can switch back to your Chromebook also. All the lines are accurate. Now all we're doing is checking solid dashed above below, greater than or equal to. That means we have a solid line that should be shaded above. That's the only one that fits the bill. All right. So the trick on this one to do it by hand was to solve for y. You have to remember your inequality rules. Whenever you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you have to flip the sign. The last one I'm going to go over is number 21. This is just looking for error analysis all over your error test. Don't sit here and read all these. Go through it and say, what should I do? You're smart. You know how to do these. So now I'm looking at graphing this. So is the graph right? We started at negative 2. We went up 3 over 1. Graph looks good. Now let's check it. Less than or equal to. It should be a solid line, which we have. But y is less than means I should have shaded below. So they should actually have shaded it down here. Okay, so now what did they do wrong? The line should know the wrong half plane is shaded. That is what the student did wrong. Okay, um, so that gets about half your homework done. You should be able to have it all finished by next class. I know some of you guys already do. Uh, thank you guys very much, and I will see you next class.